Okay, good morning and good Yom Tov. Today is the 20th day of Kislev, it's Wednesday, and the holiday of Chagagula, the holiday of two days, the 19th and the 20th day. As we know, the Alter Rebbe came out of prison in the 19th day in the evening, but by mistake, he was taken to a place not where he wanted to go, and he was in a place of uh, one of the opposers of the Alter Rebbe. And this person for three hours really interrogated and, 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 and caused the Alter Rebbe lots of pain. And Alter Rebbe said, and the pain he had in this three hours by this Jewish person who was opposer of the Alter Rebbe was worse than the 53 days in prison. In any case, and finally, the Alter Rebbe came out on the 20th day of Kislev. That's when the Chassidim got back the Alter Rebbe. And the world got back the Alter Rebbe. So again, it should be Lashon HaToiva, Belimida Chassidus, Rebbe Chassidus, Nekasei V'Nechasei. So let's begin the Tanya Shia today with Tzedakah, G'dayla Tzedakah, Shem Kanevah, Sesageula. And we learned yesterday, we read the uh, title page that the Alter Rebbe wrote explaining what this book is about the book of Tanya and then we read also the probations of the Tzadikim from the Zusha of Anapolar and the probation of the Alter Rebbe's sons for the for the later printing of the Tanya and today we, we begin reading the Alter Rebbe's foreword for this book of the Tanya. And the Alter Rebbe, as you mentioned, you know, when they printed the Tanya in the Alter Rebbe's lifetime, the Alter Rebbe's name was not even mentioned there. He didn't put his name. In, and he, he wrote the book as if he was just a compiler. He says, Likuti Amorim, it's a compilation of sayings. And the same thing also in the in the forward, he, he calls it a Gdoma Samalaki, the forward of the compiler in his humility. Only later on, after he passed away, the, the sons of the Alter Rebbe put, put of the Alter Rebbe put in the Alter Rebbe's name in the Tanya. So let's begin with uh today's shear in the Tanya. Being a letter sent to all Anash. Anash is uh, Anshe Shlomeinu, people of, of our fellowship, referring to Anash. When you say Anash, you refer to the Hasidim. And this letter was sent to the Hasidim, Anash. May God our stronghold, bless and guard them. Aleichem Ishimek, to you worthy men, do I call. Shimu elai roit fe tzedek mevakshe Hashem ve ishma aleichem eleki yur migodl vat katan. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, who seek God, and may the Almighty listen to you, both great in spiritual stature and small. Call Anshe Shla Meinu, the Medina Sein of Esmuchishelo, all Anash in our land and in nearby countries. Ishal Makoma Yevele Shalom, but Chaim Ado Elam Netzach Selevoid. May each in his own place achieve peace and eternal life. Amen, Kene Ratzain, Amen, may this will, may this be his will. And now the Alter Rebbe is addressing in this forward. The um, why he writes the this book, and he and he addresses an issue that may be raised because uh, this book of Tanya, the Alter Rebbe wrote in to replace the private audience, 
that the Hasidim used to used to come into the Alter Rebbe. Alter Rebbe had a very great success in attracting hundreds of thousands of Hasidim. And in the beginning, the Alter Rebbe would accept people privately and guide them, guide each and every one of them in how to serve Hashem. And that became impossible. So the Alter Rebbe sat down. For 20 years, he wrote this book of Tanya. And, and now here in the forward, the Alter Rebbe is addressing the, the issues that may be raised and in, in saying that it's not a fair thing. It's not, uh, you cannot replace private audience where you, where you can get privately guided in, the, in your own uh, and your own challenges, you cannot compare this by writing a book. And, and that's what he says. It is well known that all Anash are want to say, they always they used to say, constantly saying, because hearing words of moral guidance is not the same as seeing and reading such guidance in books. You know, this is this is it comes from a saying, you cannot compare seeing to, to hearing, hearing to seeing. But this statement usually is meant to say that seeing is stronger than hearing. When you see something, you're more certain. But here is using this. Um, saying, but to the other way, to say that hearing the words of guidance from the Alter Rebbe directly is much more superior to seeing and reading it in the books. Now, in what way is reading in a book less effective than hearing it, direct, hearing it directly from the Alter Rebbe? So the Alter Rebbe is going to bring out three points in what way hearing, uh, seeing, uh, reading it in books is not as effective, cannot be as effective. The number one, the number one problem is in the person who needs to be guided. The person who needs to be guided, he may be in a very low place. So whatever he reads, he reads from his perspective, from a very dark perspective. And, the, and, and the, the way he achieves and the way he understands will be the way it comes from a very dark place. Whereas when you're guided by someone, someone can see where you are and can lift you and, and elevate you. So that's point number one. So it says, Sha kaira, kaira lefi dar for the reader who gains such instructions in books will read it after his own manner and mind. And will absorb the written message according to his mental grasp and comprehension at that particular time. Now, what happens if this person is not in a good place? His whole attitude, his mind, his everything is, is in a very dark place. He's not going to be able to, to, to come out of, climb out of his own skin. Now, if his intellect and mind are confused and wander about in darkness, in ideas per pertaining to the service of Hashem, he will find it difficult to see the beneficial light hidden in the books. Although the, this light will be pleasant to the eyes and healing for the soul. So even if there, the light is there, but if the person is not there, if the person is in a very dark place, 
reading the book is, is not going to be able to elevate them, to bring them out, is not going to be able to see, to identify the light. So that's one point. Then the Alter Rebbe says there's two other points, which is from as far as the writer is, the one who writes the books. What type of books is it? So the Alter Rebbe is going to say, number one, the books that is written by, of course, great sages, but it is written in a very, on a very human, intel, intelligent, uh, and, and intellectual basis. Intellectually, you're uh, de describing the situation, describing, describing what needs to be done, and so on, what what how life should be, and so on. But the person who writes the book. He has one way of seeing things. And people are not the same. It says, It's just like people are, don't look alike, they don't think alike. So if you're going to write a book and you want to inspire someone, you, you write it based on the way you feel, you perceive things. But there are so many others, so many different ways of seeing things. So the book that one person writes is impossible to affect and inspire equally so many other people. So that's what Alter Rebbe writes. And then aside from this aforementioned possibility, that the reader's intellectual shortcomings may prevent him from perceiving the light concealed in the holy books, there is yet another difficulty. What is it? In a sifre yayira b'nuim al piseche anayishi, bevadai eina shav nechal nefesh. Those books on piety, founded on human intelligence, surely do not affect all people equally. Why not? Ki ein kola sikhlim vadeis shavis. Because not all intellects and minds are alike. And the intellect of one man is not affected and aroused by that which affects and arouses the intellect of another. You can have two people coming and joining a lecture. One person can come and says, wow, this is amazing. Another person asks him, how was the lecture? Yeah, okay, it was nice, it was good. Not everyone is inspired from the same thing. As our sages have said in reference to the blessing of he who is wise in secret. What is that blessing? Ordained by the sages to recite on the witnessing of a gathering of 600,000 Jews, whereby we praise God, God's omniscience in knowing the secrets of them all. When you see 600,000 Jews together at one time, there is a blessing you need to say. Baruch atah Hashem alokeinu melech alolam, chacham arazim, blessed are you God, king of the universe, the one who is wise in the secrets. Meaning that, should, that you see 600,000 people, there are 600,000 different Secretly, the, the different different views, different opinions. And Hashem is able to see and understand each and every one of them. So we're saying this is a praise that we praise Hashem. For their minds are not are all different from one another. So too does the Ramban of Blessed Memory explain the reason for the blessings in his Melchamas, elaborating on the comment of Sifri and the verse describing Yeshua as a man in whom there is spirit. What is it talking about? About Yeshua? Sefri explains that he was able to meet the spirit of every man. This is, Ramban talks about, about um, what the Sefri says about Yehoshua bin Nun. 
the successor of Moses. Moshe Rabbeinu before passed away. He asked Hashem, if Koyed Hashem Elokei Aruches Lachal Basar, may God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, may He appoint this Ish Asher Ruach Boy. There should be a man that the spirit in him. So Moshe Rabbeinu here is asking Hashem that the one appointed to be the leader of the Jewish people should be able to see and follow the the spirit of each and every individual. So in a way, we just said that this is something that we praise God, that God is the only one who is able to appreciate and, and see the secrets of the 600,000 Jews. But Moshe Rabbeinu asked Hashem that this should be about Yeshua. So individuals like Yeshua ben Nun, they are able to see and understand each individual's, uh, each individual's way of thinking and attend to each and every one in their own way. This already, in a way, hints already for to the answer that we're going to learn tomorrow, what the Alta Rebbe says, that some individuals do have that power. But here the Alta Rebbe brings it as supporting the question, the, 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 the difficulty that we have that we cannot understand properly when we read a book. Why? Because the writer of the book writes based on his own understanding, based on his own perceptions. So if you read a book, yes, you may be inspired. Some people will be less inspired, some people more. But you cannot say that this book will be a book that each and every Jew will pick up that book and will be inspired, will be able to guide, help him in the service of Hashem. That doesn't work like that. This is when we're talking about books that is written on logical explanations, guiding people logically. So logically, people have different ways of thinking. Except people like Yeshua bin Nun. Goes on the Alter Rebbe and says, there is, however, also other types of books. There is the books of Yira. There's the books of the holy books that is founded and holy foundations, which is based on Torah. And certainly the Torah, God in the Torah is one, and in the Torah, there is something to each and every neshama. So those type of books, perhaps, can be effective in reading those books, because each and every one has something that his neshama connects to these type of books, because this is Torah. Taira is from Hashem. And every Jew, every Neshama has a connection to the Taira. Nevertheless, says the Alter Rebbe, that even in these books of Taira, yes, every, every Neshama has a connection to a certain part of it, of this, of this book, of the Taira. But who says you will be able to find your part for that, we're asking Hashem, you know, we ask Hashem every day, give us your part, your sh our share in your Torah. We're asking for Hashem for help to be able to find our share. Because it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't come without saying. I can take it for granted. But even those work of Musa, whose foundation is in the peaks of holiness, meaning that they are founded on what? They're founded on Medrashim of our sages in whom the Spirit of God speaks. And His word is on their tongue. Those books, those holy books were written with divine, uh, with divine guidance. So even in the case of such works, the aforementioned problems ob obtains. Although, because although the Torah and the Holy One, blessed be He, are one, and all 600,000 general souls of Israel, 
and the individual souls that are there, offshoots. Down to even the, the soul sparks residing within the most worthless and least esteemable members of our people, the children of Israel. Even the people who are so careless about anything spiritual, nevertheless, all of them are connected to the Torah. All of the all of, and are all they're all bound up with the Torah, and the Torah is what binds them to God. As is known from the Holy Zoya. Nevertheless, is Dalta Rebbe. Yet this is said in a general way for the Jewish people as a whole. So this statement of the Zoya speaks of the bond between the Jew, between Jewry in general with the Torah in its entirety. It doesn't refer to a particular Jew seeking individual instructions in a specific area in the Torah. So how do you find your own specific way, your own specific place that can inspire your neshama? It is true that the Torah, it lends itself to interpretation by the rule of general principle and specific applications. And these applications may be further broken down to even more specific details. To apply to each individual soul of Israel rooted in the Torah. Nevertheless, yet not every man is privileged to recognize his specific place in the Torah. So that he may know how to derive specific guidance from it. And al Rebbe goes on to say that even in the Torah, obviously we have the simple dry laws, what is permissible, what is not, what, what, what needs to be done in certain situations, what is kosher, what is not kosher. Those are simple laws. Then there is also the more laws that pertain in of, of our, uh, parts of the Torah that talk about our uh, love and fear of Hashem. So the love and fear of Hashem is more, certainly more, connected specifically with each individual neshama and in their own way. But you would think that the, sim the simple laws of what is kosher, what is not, is something that is that, that we all think the same way. Says the Alter Rebbe, no. Even in those laws, even in the laws that is permissible, the simple dry laws, we find that there are also extreme opinions in the Torah. Someone says yes, and someone says no. And that also comes from the fact that their neshama is connected to a certain way. A certain, it comes from a different, a different part, a different source. That's what Al-Tarabah says, even in the Torah laws, governing things forbidden and Even in the Torah laws, governing things forbidden and permissible, which have been revealed to us and to our children, Equally, even in these laws, we we witness arguments from one extreme to another between the Tanaim and Amaraim. The Tanaim is the, the sages of the Mishnah, Amaraim is the sages of the Talmud. Yet these, as well as those, are the words of the living God. Lashon Rabbi. In the phrase, the words of living God appears in a plural form. It doesn't say Kel Chai, which is singular. It says Elokim Chaim, plural. Why does it say plural? Because the diversity of opinions in the Halacha stems from the plurality in the source of life of the souls of Israel. Which within the living God, there is different, <coughs> different uh, emotive attributes that serve as sources for different types of souls. Yamin Chesed 
the souls, and hence also their sores, so to speak, are divided into three general categories, right, left, and center, representing kindness, chesed, severity, gevura, and beauty, tiferes. Those souls which are rooted in the attributes of kindness tend to be lenient in their halachic decisions, being inclined towards kindness, and so on, as is known. So this is what we find, says the Alter Rebbe, even in simple laws, we find there's so many diver diverse opinions in the Torah. So you got to find your way. What is your way, your connection of your neshama to this? What is the part of the Torah that connects to your neshama? Surely, how much more so will subjective differences play a role in matters hidden to God Almighty? What are the matters that are hidden to God Almighty? The inun namely, to one's awe and love of God, which are subjective by their very nature, for they express themselves the b'moicha v'liba the cholchad l'pum shiur delay. The love and awe of God they express themselves in the mind and heart of each person according to to his own measure. Sheer means measure. What does it mean? According to his heart's estimation. And according to the gate, shar means measure, shar means also gate. According to the gate that makes in his heart to permit his intellectual understanding of godliness to pervade his heart and generate within him a love and awe of God. As the Zoya comments on the verse, her husband is known by the gates. So the Zoya interprets the husband of this verse as a reference to God, who is the husband of the community of Israel. And we know and attach ourselves to him by the She'arim. What is the She'arim? Which the Zoya interprets as the sense of in the sense of shar gate, a shiur, a measure, and hashara, estimation. As explained above, at any rate, we see that being inspired in love and fear of God is intrinsically subjective. So therefore, the Alter Rebbe lays out the, the complaints that we don't know if people actually complain to the Alter Rebbe or what the Alter Rebbe expected, people should complain about the book, that this might be, it's not that in, in a book, no matter how holy the book, and no matter how it was written, there is there is a deficiency in in receiving encouragement and, 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 uh, and in being inspired by a book compared to being inspired when you talk to the person personally, that he can direct that it can address you directly, individually. So this is the end of today's shir. And stay tuned tomorrow, because tomorrow the Alter Rebbe is going to continue and explain why this book of Tanya is different. Why the book that the Alter Rebbe wrote, the book of Tanya, is indeed a book that is written to each and every individual, each and every Jew, no matter where, no matter when you read the book, you will find answers to your personal, individual challenges and problems, and you find the solutions right here in this book of Tanya. So thank you for joining. Mirza Shem, we'll see you tomorrow. Bezat Hashem.